Hello everybody, I'm Sneaksy Gamer, and today I'm going to be starting a new game on the channel. Not a new game, but a new series. Um, I'm going to be starting Outlast, so let's, let's start that up. I'm going to have to adjust the volume before I can get in there. The only reason it says continue is because I started it up to see if it would run okay while I was recording. But I will have to turn the volume down a little. But yeah, see we've got two auto saves from a little bit ago and that's it I'll delete those I've played through this before I've played through this and the DLC the whistleblower DLC but we're gonna be starting fresh and I've got my webcam on the left side this time because we've got a battery meter in this game that's up in the right side but I want to go for nightmare but I'm not sure it's such a good idea. I'm gonna go for it. Outlast contains intense violence, gore, graphic sexual content, and strong language. Please enjoy. <laughs> you are Miles Upshur, an investigative reporter whose ambition is about to earn him an intimate tour of hell on earth. Always willing to risk d digging into the stories no other journalist would dare investigate, you will seek out the dark secret at the heart of Mount Massive Asylum. Stay alive as long as you can, record everything. You are not a fighter. To navigate the horrors of Mount Massive and expose the truth, your only choices are to run, hide, or die. And that is quite literal. You have absolutely no way to fight back. I love this game. Here we are, Mount Massive Asylum. We've got our press pass hanging in the window, or on the mirror, not in the window, I guess in the windshield, but. September 17th, 2013, from 102601-10756 at mutemail.com to milesupshire at gmail.com. <laughs> Subject, tip slash illegal activity at Murkoff Psychiatric Systems. You don't know me. Have to make this quick. They might be monitoring. I did two weeks of software consult at Murkoff Psychiatric Systems facility in Mount Massive. All sorts of NDAs I am very much breaking right now, but seriously, fuck those guys. Terrible things happening there. Don't understand it. Don't believe half the things I saw. Doctors talking about dream therapy going too deep. Finding something that I've been waiting for them in the mountain. People are being hurt and Murkoff is making money. It needs to be exposed. So yeah, this for a good portion of the game, there's not really anything supernatural that you're up against. I mean, there is supernatural stuff in the game, but for a if as far as I remember, for quite a good portion of the game, you're not really you don't run into anything supernatural really. Objectives are updated in your reporter's notebook containing your notes and picked up documents. 
N is notes, J is documents, the whistleblower. And that whistleblower DLC you play is the guy who sent him that message, I believe, if I remember correctly. And we use right click to bring up our camera. See up in the top right, it shows the battery meter. Whoops. <laughs> I am a dumbass. You have night vision on your camera here. This place is pretty spooky looking. To open the door quickly, press left mouse button. To open the door slowly, hold left mouse button. I think it was. But you want to have your camera out as much as possible in this game. So yeah, holding it, you open it slowly. I think somebody's in that window or up in that window or something there is what happened, but... Mount Massive Asylum. I start feeling sick just looking at this place. Mount Massive Asylum. Shut down amid scandal and government secrecy in 1971. Reopened by Murkoff Psychiatric Systems in 2009 under the guise of a charitable organization. Cell phone reception cut off abruptly a mile out, more like a jammer than a lost signal. The Murkoff Corporation has a long track record of disguising profit as charity, but never on American soil. Whatever they thought they could get out of this place has to be big. Might finally be the th story that breaks the bastards. Yeah, if we survive. <laughs> Notes are only added to your notebook when your camcorder is raised. So yeah, that's why I said you want to have your camera. Ah, I think that's the event that we witnessed. So that's why I said you want to have your camcorder out as much as possible. Because if you miss something, you don't get your notes from it. And we've actually got a body and legs and arms and stuff, which is, you don't typically see in, it's more in indie games where you don't see that, but there's many games where when you look down, you don't see a body on your character. That's just kind of weird. But, oh yeah, we've got stamina as well. You can run out of stamina, which is very bad. <laughs> But yeah, your batteries don't run out unless you're using the night vision function, which is helpful, but not realistic. Mount Massive Asylum. Of course, the front door is locked. Gonna have to find a different way in then. We've got military vehicles here for some reason. Or they appear to be military. Mercs. Mercs as in like mercenaries mercs. <laughs> this isn't merc short for mercenaries. I mean that's with a C but. Who knows. Oh boy. I gotta get in that window. Yeah, the first part of this isn't so bad. It's mostly just building tension. But this game gets pretty damn scary, actually. I mean, considering for the most part you're just it's just mental patience, pretty much. But it is fucking terrifying at times.
but I absolutely love this game. So yeah, we're getting our tutorial here, telling us how to move about and stuff. To activate the night vision on your camcorder, press F when your camera is raised. So yeah, this, there's a lot of the game where I'm going to be in this which makes it absolutely fucking terrifying. Yeah, see, that's another thing. You can either shut them... Oh no, you have to slam them shut, that's right. I think if you're inside, you can shut it slowly, maybe. I don't remember. Let's try it. Just to... Nope, you gotta... You always gotta shut the door <laughs> like that. Not exactly a good thing. That did not sound like a TV. I don't remember a whole lot about this game. Here, we got another battery. I shouldn't be down a battery yet, but I was stupid and hit the wrong button earlier. Yeah, that's a lovely sight. Blood everywhere. Murkoff Psychiatric System. Project Wall Rider. Mount Massive, Colorado. Case number 174, patient initials, WPH, Billy. Consultation dated 12, 2012, 10, 14. Initial date of patient consult, 2009, 4, 12. Patient age 19, gender male, observing physician, Dr. Carl Houston, DBNR. Therapy status, patient claims to have progressed to self-directed lucid dream states. Morphogenic engine activity observed at unprecedented scale. Continuing stage 4 hormone schedule. Now see, this is a bit off. Not really related to the game, but... Is it even picking up the game's music right now? Anyway, um see that lucid dreaming if you don't know what it is basically it's when you're able to when a person is able to realize that they're dreaming and actually control their dreams to to an extent i mean that's basically a really dumbed down version of what it is but it's something that many people actually work towards being able to do because if you can do it yeah that's just imagine being able to control your own dream i mean pretty damn cool but it's kind of kind of a weird thing because i've i've actually looked into it because i would i have thought about trying it before but <laughs> The one thing that's really, I mean, this is all just based on what I've read. I don't know how it, 
how it actually works or anything other than what I've read. But from what I've read, there's only one reason I haven't really tried it. And that is, apparently, it is quite possible to go through a state of sleep paralysis when trying to get to the ability to control your dreams, I guess. Again, all based on what I've read, not anything that I can guarantee is true. And I've looked into that sleep paralysis, and apparently it can be extremely terrifying. Like, I mean, hallucinations of... Supposedly hallucinations of strange creatures that you're unable to move, can't talk, can't make noise, and it's just... What it is, I guess, is when your body falls asleep, but your mind is still awake or something like that. And it just, apparently it can be some of the most terrifying things a person can experience because their body, like I said, your body is, again, don't can't really take my word for this this is just what I've read but apparently your body is completely unable to move it feels like you can't breathe you can't scream you can't you just you can't move your body is just I mean it's apparently it's quite terrifying people have I've read in um people's reports on what they've had where it's they've they've hallucinated some sort of creature holding them down and I mean just absolutely horrifying shit and honestly I don't want to risk that happening just so I can control my own dreams I mean it sounds like terrifying shit and and people it happens to people regularly too not just when you're trying to do that it can happen apparently it's something that many people experience in their life luckily i have not had it happen yet i hope i never do judging by what i've read about it but anyway that's just i wanted to talk a little bit about that because lucid dream states that when i hear about lucid dreaming i always there's always that part of me that's kind of like you know i really want to try that but then as i said i think about that whole sleep paralysis stuff that's possible when you're trying to do that and it's just like yeah i'd rather not risk that (laughs) call me a chicken but i'm not interested in experiencing something like that and sorry that's just a little bit of me kind of rambling just kind of a uh look inside what (laughs) What goes on in my mind at times? (laughs) I think about that kind of thing when I... Basically, when I see... When I hear about lucid dreaming, that... That's the kind of stuff I think about, and it... I don't know. That just came to mind. Anyway. Continuing on with the game. Diagnostics. Spirometry revealed no bronchial accumulation. Uh, hematocrit, I don't know, centrifuge again failed to separate erythrocytes, highly worrisome. I don't know what these words mean. (laughs) MRI revealed arrhythmic REM and REM cycle, arrhythmic, so not, not in rhythm, I guess, I don't know. I'm assuming that just means out of the ordinary REM, I think, is rapid eye movement, which is a a point in sleeping. I believe it's the point when you're in the deepest part of sleep, I think, is rapid eye movement. The REM cycle, I, I don't know for sure. I don't know much about this stuff, but... I'm assuming that's not a good thing. Laughter in REM state, which I don't know what that could mean, but 
interview notes. Billy asked What the hell? <laughs> Billy asked about the status of his mother's lawsuit against Murkoff and the asylum. This represents a catastrophic breach in security, despite Billy's claims that he discovered the truth in the blood dreams of Dr. Traeger. Okay. Note, the only Traeger on company records, one Richard Traeger, is an executive from MRD. All orderlies and security personnel must be questioned and video security improved to include analytical biometrics. Murkoff Psychiatric Systems, Project Wall Rider, Mount Massive, Colorado. Okay, sorry about that whole little going off on that thing about the lucid dreaming there. I just... Not sure what that is, but I don't like it. Please avoid contamination. Wash your hands. I think washing my hands is the <laughs> least of my concerns here. No, I don't know if I want to go down there again, if I even can. Okay, there's nothing over here. I don't know if I've ever tried it. Can I get back out of here now? Nope, apparently it's locked now. Okay. Now, when do we see that guy? I think we see a big guy out here pretty quick here. A big guy who becomes quite a pain in the ass at at times. Proclaim the gospel. Okay. Good to know that there's uh, religious nuts here. <laughs> I thought we saw that big guy out there. Okay, just a warning jump scare here. <laughs> and he's got no head. And so is that guy. That guy's missing his head as well. Holy shit, that is loud. So yeah, right about now, I'd be like, okay, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have come in here in the first place. Oh boy. Yes, sir, I would love to. I'm inside. I'm inside. Bodies everywhere. Blood, burn marks. Heads lined up like bottles behind a bar. Dead Murkoff scientists hung from the ceiling. Their badges say Murkoff Advanced Research Systems. Murkoff's longtime MO has been to profit off the exploitation of supposed charity. Fuck the third world and bankroll another million. How did Murkoff think they would make money off a building full of crazy people? There's some kind of tactical cop pinned like a pig on a spit. Tells me to get the fuck out and then dies. Would have been a good thing to hear when I could still leave the way I came. Jesus Christ, look at that. Oh my god. Okay, 
Okay, uh, Miles, I know you're scared. I will be too. There's the guy I was. There's the guy. Miles, I know you're scared, but please calm down and stop breathing so heavily. You're freaking me out, man. Oh boy. Somebody damn flush. I don't know if I'm going to be able to complete the game on this difficulty, actually. Why would I even try to go in after that guy? Okay. I know what happens at this part. Yeah, that guy becomes a huge fucking problem later on in the game. For quite a good portion of the game. And who are you, then? This guy's just fucking insane. I mean, everybody here is, but this guy's just a fucking freak. I, I see. Merciful God, you have sent me an apostle. Guard your life, son. Just gonna warn you guys, this game does get very, very graphic. New objective, escape the asylum, access security control. I don't, I didn't catch the rest of that. Okay, you can still see somewhat with the night vision if your batteries run out, but not nearly enough to be safe. Yeah, so there's the front doors, but they're locked tight. Wait a second. Ah. I was going to say, weren't there vehicles out there? Hello, friend. No batteries or anything for me? I wouldn't be able to carry any more batteries at the moment anyways. Yeah, see. I mean... You can kind of see, but really not well enough to, <laughs> not well enough to stay safe. And considering, um, considering this game is mostly not anything supernatural, it is terrifying. I mean, it's not quite that bad yet, but it will be. The Murkoff Corporation, United States Office, Warrant for Seizure, Case Number 2947581044. In the matter of the seizure of Mount Massive Psychiatric Center, Murkoff Psychiatric Systems, Mount Massive Wilderness Area, Country Road 112. Uh, affidavit. Whatever. I think that's how that word is pronounced. I've heard it before, I just can't guarantee that's how it was supposed to be pronounced. Having been made before the board of directors by Murkoff, had Murkoff Hardline Security, MHS, who has reason to believe catastrophic security failure of psychiatric center with imminent danger of environment contamination. We are satisfied that the affidavit... Affid, uh, I don't know. Affidavit, I think, is how it's pronounced. Again, I'm not sure. And testimony established established sufficient evidence to require urgent action on the part of MHS and grounds for the in, for the issuance of this warrant. You are hereby required to grant MHS full access to all facilities. What the heck? Oh, I know what that was. I'll get that in a minute. You are hereby required to grant MHS full access to all facilities and surrender complete authority to its agents. By acceptance of this document, you and any surviving relatives 
surrender all claims of litigation against the Murkoff Corp. or its board subsidiaries, sorry, for the actions of MHS or the circumstances which require their actions, regardless of responsibility. Oh boy. No. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that, that looked painful. I don't think I can get down here just yet, can I? Nope. I am very sorry, sir. That looked quite painful. Okay. Yeah. I feel perfectly comfortable after seeing that. I'm saving that middle one for last. <laughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> Witness. I'm already beat all to hell, picking broken glass out of my scalp. Couple cracked ribs, nearly killed by a deformed giant. Looks like somebody tried to fuck start his head with a cheese grater. <laughs> okay. I like that. I, I really like that. He throws me through a wall, knocks me unconscious. I wake up in some doughy old man with a face like an alcoholic kitty fiddler. Oh, Jesus. In a homemade priest outfit, calls me his apostle. Not a job I asked for. There are words scrawled in blood everywhere. I'm getting an ugly feeling in my gut that the priest is writing them and for my benefit. Okay, yeah, this game is pretty, pretty graphic. I thought there was something in here. There's the security room. He needs a key card. I don't need to go in there just yet anyways. Why do we have to pay for this? Why do we have to die? Walker will kill us just for being sick. We're some people, but we didn't choose this. Walker is that big guy, I believe, if I remember correctly. I believe his name was Chris Walker. From Helen Granite to Group 8416 at MurkoffCorp.lu. Subject Project Wall Rider on Site Inspection. Dear Sirs, the full report pending no immediate action is the full report pending. No immediate action is required on the part of the Murkoff Corporation. The profit potential of Project Wall Rider remains staggeringly high. Of course. The four fatalities contain enough ambiguous data to make any litigation, if evidence is correctly managed, impossible. Project Wall Rider remains a dangerous initiative, and there will almost certainly be further casualties. As with the others, however, family and government interest in the patients is so low as to make any is so low as to make any chance of legal actions vanishingly unlikely. Violence among patients is an increase is increasing as the morphogenic engine therapy gets closer to producing working models. But a combination of physical and chemical restraints has proven sufficiently effective to assure continued control and profit. Respectfully, Helen Granite, Murkoff Legal Mitigation Department. Of course.
you still hiding out in there? Of course you are. Where else would you be? Okay, I can't get into this side, I don't think. Don't think there's any reason to anyways. I have to go this way. It has been a while since I played this game, but there are a few parts that I know I'm... One part for sure I know I'm going to have to censor. At least one part I'm going to have to censor, because there is some, some nudity in this game, and frankly, not, not in a good way. Markov Psychiatric System, Project Wallrider, blah, blah. Case 136, patient initial CLW, Walker. Yeah, Chris Walker. Consultation date, 2013, 528. Initial date of patient consult, 2011, 128. Age 32, male. Observing physician, Dr. Rudolf Wernicke. Wernicke, Wernicke, Wernick? I don't know. Wernick, I don't know. Notation by Dr. Walsh. Therapy status. Morphogenic engine activity plateaued at roughly 2,000 ppm. Unsafe to progress beyond stage 3 hormone schedule. Diagnostics. Spirometry revealed light to medium bronchial accumulation. MRI scans consistent with patient's reported dreams. Interview notes. Walker was interviewed in restraints following his self-inflicted mutilations. Restraint... Restraint have to be altered to accommodate his enormous size. Extensive dermal eruptions as consistent with failed morphogenic engine cellular activity. He claims the skin ripped from his forehead allows for a truer way of seeing. Seems to have some boyhood experience with Tuatara lizards and their parietal, parietal eyes. Parietal? I don't know. He has expressed anxiety about his flesh, specifically around his lips and nose. Attending orderlies should be advised to watch for further self-mutilation. The mental trauma he sustained while serving in Afghanistan seems to be retarding progression of the ME process. His predominant fixation amplified by therapy is a manic exaggeration of military security protocol. A continuation of both chemical and physical restraints is highly recommended. So yeah, that guy's a former soldier, and he is apparently quite, quite disturbed. I don't, I don't know the proper term for it, but yeah, that guy's bad news, very bad news. You got a friendly, uh, friendly little guy in the wheelchair there. crowd of broken men watching a dead channel. They look like patients. They survived whatever happened here, but nobody's home. So yeah, the guys are... They're here, but they're... Their minds have been broken, apparently, and they... They may be here physically, but they're not here. <laughs> Picked up the key card for security control. Well, we all know that it's not going to be as easy as just walking out of here. Again, if you can hear that beeping, I will get to that after the video. It's okay, you don't have batteries. I may have made a mistake going with this difficulty. I'm 
not sure. I guess we'll find out. So yeah, these guys, as I said, they're here, but they're mentally, they're not here. They... I think that's what he meant by nobody's home. They... I knew it was coming and it still, <laughs> still got me. I knew that was coming and it still scared the hell out of me. I was thinking it was after you passed by him though, that's probably why it got me. It happened earlier than I thought it was going to. But Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Whew. This game is very scary. <laughs> I love that. You can look behind you while running by holding Q or E. <sighs> I don't like that. <laughs> That's basically telling you you're gonna have to watch behind you when you're running away from shit, you know? <laughs> Although I don't think I ever actually used that, or if I did, it was very little. That's not actually something that was a requirement to use that in the game, I don't think. But it's there. They lie. see anything going on in any of these cameras doesn't look like it okay well unlock the main doors oh boy that's gonna take forever no 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 no. Now we gotta hide because somebody's coming. God, this guy's fucking terrifying. I mean, that guy's massive. He's just fucking huge. Fucking huge. <laughs> big fucking guy. <laughs> the big fucker is stalking me. Found a patient file for a Chris Walker, ex military police. Several tours in Afghanistan. A lot of the blood in this place is on his hands, but not all of it. You just go on your way. Well, we had a save there, so I think that's where I'm going to end this. Things are about to get pretty... pretty bad. <laughs> so, that's it for this episode. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.